the wedding of Ivy Getty, an heiress of the Getty oil family fortune, was a three-day extravaganza, filled with powerful people, and even more powerful imagery. Here's a look at this highly symbolic affair. Ivy Getty is the great-granddaughter of tycoon and industrialist J. Paul Getty, the founder of Getty Oil. Stating that this man was rich, is a gross understatement. In 1957, Fortune magazine named him the richest living American, and, in 1966, the Guinness Book of Records named him as the world's richest private citizen. Getty's immense wealth turned his family into an American dynasty, which, after several generations, is still worth billions of dollars. Ivy Getty is an heiress of this fortune, and her wedding to photographer Tobias Engel showcased the full extent of her family's wealth, political influence, and global reach. There were lots of rich and powerful people in attendance. Predictably enough, there was a whole lot of symbolism relating to the occult elite, and, bizarrely enough, there was a clear focus on monarch mind control. Before we get into the extravaganza that was Ivy Getty's wedding, here's a look at her family's background. This is J. Paul Getty inside his mansion Sutton Place. Not unlike the Kennedys, rumors have been circulating for decades that the Getty family is cursed. Indeed, an entire book could be written about the bizarre stories and mysterious deaths surrounding the Getty dynasty. Though the lives of the younger generation look glam and glossy on social media, family insiders say they face an uphill battle when it comes to the dark past of the Getty family. Gay Paul Getty was once the richest person on earth. Born in 1892, he died in 1976, leaving a dysfunctional family plagued by drug overdoses, a kidnapping, illicit affairs and scandals. He was by many accounts a cold stingy man, who was married and divorced five times, and had five sons by four different wives. His youngest son, Timothy, died of a brain tumor at 12, but J. Paul could not be bothered to attend the funeral. His eldest son, George, stabbed himself to death with a barbecue fork while under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Another son, John Paul Getty Jr., born Eugene, became a heroin addict, whose second wife, Talitha, died of a drug overdose in Rome. In 1973, John Paul Jr.'s son, 16-year-old John Paul III, was kidnapped by Italian mobsters who cut off part of his ear and mailed it to his grandfather in a quest for a $2.2 million ransom, which J. Paul initially refused. Though he was eventually freed, John Paul Getty III never got over the trauma and became a drug addict. In 1981, he suffered a stroke brought on by alcohol and drugs and was left blind, unable to speak, and confined to a wheelchair until his death in 2011 at age 54. But why is this family so cursed? A family friend provided this sinister explanation. We're talking old school money, so you have old school demons and ghosts passed down from generation to generation. More recently, Ivy Getty's father, John Gilbert Getty, did not escape that curse, as he died suddenly at age 52 in 2020. Not unlike other sad events relating to the Gettys, circumstances surrounding his death were somewhat in mystery. This is John Gilbert Getty with his daughter Ivy. When John Gilbert Getty was found unresponsive in a $1,200 suite on November 20 at the Lux Hotel Emma, a chic refurbished brewery in downtown San Antonio, details about his death, in the words of a veteran investigator, were buttoned down very fast. That's how they do it, Los Angeles investigator John Nazarian, who worked for years for billionaire heiress Doris Duke, told The Post, they get in there, and they clean it up, and they make sure nobody talks. Neither hotel personnel nor the San Antonio police would comment to the post. But these tragic events did not diminish the family's wealth and power. And Ivy Getty's wedding was proof that a new generation of elite socialites is slowly but surely replacing their parents. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Mm 
Ivy Getty got married to Tobias Engel, the son of English actor Cheryl Prime. In the Vogue article that covered the entire event, Ivy explained how the couple got engaged. After attending the UNICEF ball, we went to Capri for three days, Getty says. Normally, I pick where we go out to eat, but this time Toby insisted he pick. This didn't raise any red flags, but when I got to the restaurant, I thought to myself, oh he really planned this. The interesting tidbit about this quote is the fact that they attended the UNICEF ball. August Getty wears a devil horn mask at the 2017 UNICEF ball. He's a fashion designer who dressed celebrities such as Kim Kardashian, Paris Hilton, Neely Cyrus, Katy Perry, B.B. Rexit, and Rachel McAdams. UNICEF Bowls are a gathering place of heirs and socialites, where a new generation of the occult elite meets and greets. In many ways, Ivy Getty's wedding had a similar purpose as the old generation passed down the proverbial torch and, maybe, the curse. The wedding was an opulent extravaganza that spanned over three days and included multiple themed parties. Meticulously covered by Vogue magazine, the event was also filled with symbolism, starting with the invitation itself. The invitation featured Gustav Moreau's painting, Death of Sappho, which depicts the Greek poet Sappho dying after she threw herself off a cliff. That's a weird choice of painting for a wedding. Beyond this bizarre depiction of suicide, the entire wedding was peppered with symbolism relating to monarch programming. While each individual symbol could be shrugged off as a coincidence, the combination of all of these elements points strongly to a deliberate theme. At the rehearsal dinner, Ivy wore a monarch butterfly dress. At another party, the girls wore Alice in Wonderland-themed pajamas. As explained in countless previous videos, Alice in Wonderland is one of the main programming scripts used in MK Ultra, where the slave is told to follow the white rabbit through the looking glass, code for dissociation. Betty's wedding dress was made of mirror shards. In the context of this wedding, this dress made from broken mirror pieces is highly symbolic. Indeed, once MK slaves are told to go through the looking glass to dissociation, the breaking of the mirror represents the fragmentation of the core persona. These young bridesmaids had butterfly wings. This photo shows Ivy was walked down the aisle by her grandfather Gordon Getty. When his father died in 1976, Gordon Getty assumed control of the family's $2 billion trust. In 1983, Forbes magazine ranked him the richest person in America, with a net worth of a little over $2 billion. Nowadays, Gordon Getty is a fixture of San Francisco society and helped fund the political rise of Governor Gavin Newsom, Vice President Kamala Harris, and the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi. Guess who was officiating the wedding? Nancy Pelosi stands between the bride and the groom. This picture is symbolic for several reasons. First, the wedding takes place in the rotunda of the San Francisco City Hall, a place of power. Like many other government buildings built in the last century, the San Francisco City Hall was built according to Masonic principles. This is classic Masonic imagery, featuring twin pillars and stairs leading to illumination. Power is also conveyed through the person who is officiating the wedding. Nancy Pelosi is the presiding officer of the United States House of Representatives, and she is second in the presidential line of succession after Vice President Kamala Harris. The fact that she was there to officiate the wedding was a great way of showcasing the Getty family's incredible wealth and influence. Another notable guest was California Governor Gavin Newsom. In the days before the wedding, people were wondering why Newsom was missing. This is a headline from SFGate. And a headline from Newsweek. This is a tweet by political reporter Doug Sovereign, claiming he spotted missing Gavin Newsom. Clearly, Newsom had to be there, no matter what. And there were many other notable guests. The wedding was a star-studded event. 
there were numerous celebrities, politicians, business figures, fashion designers, and members of royal families. Here are some examples. John Galliano, the creative director of Maison Margiela. In this picture, he appears to be recreating a classic Masonic pose, complete with a hidden hand and his feet at a 90 degrees angle, recreating the Masonic square. This is a screenshot from Duncan's Ritual of Freemasonry, depicting the sign of the Master of the Second Veil. On the right is Paul Denev, the Vice President of Apple. On the right is actress Anya Taylor-Joy, who starred in The Queen's Gambit. She was the maid of honor. On the right is London Breed, the mayor of San Francisco. From left to right, Marie Chantal, the crown princess of Greece, Bronson Van Wyck, who planned events for Presidents Clinton, Bush, and Obama. Vanessa Getty, who enjoys Botox. Olivia Rodrigo seems to get invited to every single elite event, such as the 2021 Met Gala. Princess Maria Olympia of Greece and Denmark. Prince Constantine Alexios of Greece and Denmark, Prince Odysseus Kaiman of Greece and Denmark, and aristocrat Rocco Brignand of Brabant. There were many others, but I think you get the picture. The event that happened in San Francisco on November 6th was not a mere wedding. It was a show of power of the occult elite. But wealthy, powerful, and influential guests in attendance, a billionaire heiress got married in a ceremony, officiated by the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Through subtle yet unmissable symbolism, the event also hinted at the dark and disturbing underworld of the occult elite. Indeed, the entire event was peppered with symbolism relating to monarch mind control, maybe hinting to the fact that these two young rich people getting married might be pawns in the grand scheme of things. The symbolism gave a whole other meaning to Tobias Engel's vows which ended with the sentence. I am your protector and your slave. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.